Today I'm going to do a video on how to terminate a Cat5 cable like this that just comes out of the wall. Terminate that in a surface mounted jack housing. So what we've got here, this particular one is manufacturer's Leviton, but there's all sorts of different manufacturers of these. And our objective here is to take this cable, which is kind of messy and just hanging on the wall, terminate it in this housing, and then surface mount that on the baseboard, which will be a lot neater than what we have right now. So, if we look at our surface mounted housing here, one end of it with the big square end is going to be for the Cat5 cable. And this, as you can see, has the input for the Cat5 cable right there, and it's going to be in this housing. The other end of it, with the little half circle type end, is the end that the Cat5 cable is going to go into. So if we take a flathead screwdriver or something along those lines and just, I should have a smaller flathead screwdriver, but anyway, if we pry that off and have a look at what we got inside here, this is where our termination for the Cat5 cable is going to slide into here. So we'll do that a little bit later on. And there's a couple of holes here. We can screw this to the wall or my preferred method if you have a similar type of housing as what I have here there's going to be your two screws which you can use. The only problem with those is if, you, if you're putting them on the baseboard there is the potential to split the baseboard. So I like these little sticky pads and what I like to do before I do anything else is to remove the backing off of one of them, put it onto the back of the housing like that. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you do all the rest of the process and don't have these little sticky pads on there, sometimes it can be a little harder to maneuver. So then we take our two little pads like that, stick them to the back of the housing and then we'll just leave the outside covering here. I'll just peel that back so you can see. We're just going to leave that on there for now. So the next thing we want to do is cut this Cat5 cable to approximately where we want to put the surface mounted jack. So in this case here, I'm going to want to put that right around there. So I'm going to take my Cat5 cable and allowing for the fact that it's got to go into the the housing and it's not a real big deal we can staple this along the the, top, the uh, cat5 cable itself along the baseboard so I'm gonna cut that right around there a little bit past where I'm actually gonna want the housing to be I'll lay that down there for reference and now I'm move here in such a way as to cut the cat5 cable so once you cut that, we're going to terminate these in that housing. So we got to cut that Cat5 cable back and expose all the pairs in it. Just move those that outside sheathing there, and we want to get it good and far back. Because as I say, this isn't an exact science, we're just basically looking for a place to get beyond any damaged wires where we cut this. And if we open up the Cat5 cable here, we're going to see, where's it at? Well, sometimes there's a string in there. That keeps the cable together and we can pull that back. This particular cable doesn't have one so what I'm going to do is just 
carefully snip that cable back. You gotta make sure you don't damage any of your wires. And get that back to a point where we're gonna have a couple inches of wire there. I may stop recording while I do this. You get the general idea. Most Cat5 cable does have that pull string, which is really handy. Anyway, you got that back. I'm cut off that outer cable sheathing there. Then we want to take all our pairs and separate them. This is not particularly good Cat5 cable. Generally, there's lots of twists in it. This is older stuff not particularly good quality as I say once you get your individual wires separated like that you're gonna take your cat5 end and I've got another video also too that goes into this uh, a little bit uh, maybe more detail it's for using a electrical box when you're mounting one of these in an electrical box. So the idea here is if we look the, along the bottom row see if there's an A there and what the color codes we have are green, green white, orange white, blue white. So each wire is going to correspond to the color here. And now in my experience it doesn't really matter if you go by the a, which is the bottom line, or the B, the top line, long as you terminate the other end of this cable, wherever it is, with the same means. Now, I always use A. So, for instance, right there we have green, green, white. So, we have our Cat5 cable positioned at the end of our connector. We take the wire corresponding to our little color code as we discussed, green there at the top of my thumb, take the green wire, bend it over into place and push it down. Now there's a handy little tool for pushing these down which I always lose. I recommend you use the little tool but if I get in a pinch when this happens I just use the little tie off of a bread bag. I know some of these techie guys are going to give me a hard time about that but whatever works. And then you just go along to each wire and bend them into place as you go. This Cat5 uh, cable is really bad. The color codes aren't going to color codes even, aren't even correct on these wires. But anyway, just for illustrations purposes, take the wire, bend it into place, like that. Take your little push tool or bread clip in this case, push them into place. Now I'm going to just put these all in here because this is just for illustration purposes and this cat5 cable doesn't have the, even the standard color code in us we just want to show how to terminate these connectors more than anything so get them all in this place like that and then we're going to cut the ends off so all the wires are in place and again, the big thing here is that whatever wiring scheme you use on this end, use the same on the other end. Cut the ends off flat, like so. Hopefully you have a better pair of pliers than me. I'm trying to avoid having a coughing fit here. It's cold season in Nova Scotia and me and everybody else has a cold. So once you cut those like that, you want to take your dust clip I'm just going to move that so you can see it place that over your wires like so push that into place. So now we take the bottom Orient this. There's a, uh, just uh, going to move this so you can see where we're at here. There's the bottom 
of the surface mounted jar plate. This is going to go into place in here so that our dust cap, on this unit anyway, this Lebanon product, is facing up. Which means that if we look at the front of it, it's going to go like that. So, take it at a bit of an angle. Show this as many ways as I can here. Place that, push it in. To kind of take your thumb, force it this way, and kind of down with the other thumb. And then, looking at it from the front, you'll have that. You can see it's flat here, so it's actually locked into place. Now, some of these little kits have a small little tie wrap that will uh, be included. This one doesn't. But what I like to do is that hole there, I put a tie wrap through it. You don't have to do this, but it kind of takes the strain off the cable. Put your tie wrap around it and tighten that up. I can't see what I'm doing here. I'm all hunched over. I'm trying to look at the tie wrap and there we go. So, you tighten that up around the cable. That takes the stress off of the Cat5 cable. Connects it directly to that pipe. Now, you have this scenario. You take your little cover, position that over, that'll snap into place. So you should have one nice little unit like that. Now, I'll usually put a couple of staples along the baseboard there. Keep that into place, I'll do that in a minute. So at this point, I'm going to remove the backing from the sticky pads. I'll staple that down later. I'll just hold it into place for our purposes. And I'm going to move my camera over here. Put that right along the top of the baseboard, or you can also put it down on the baseboard, whatever works. Well, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to put it down there, push it into place, and let's have a little look there. Basically, now, it's going to look a lot neater than it did once I get that Cat5 pick cable stapled into place and then instead of having that long cable coming across the floor you just take your new one and put it in the end there so it should be a lot neater